So welcome everybody to our new weekly outlook. So we're gonna go over the fundamental side first and then move on to the technical side with Stefanos. There's only really two articles that I wanna go over today and the rest of it will be the economic calendar. So this month is going to be very important to kind of just you know state that right off the bat because we have interest rates coming out uh, from the Euro. You also have the US interest rates and then also like you know a lot of other major central banks have already been releasing their interest rates. So we're sitting at a good spot now going into like the middle of the year almost and we have already seen, you know, the last two years, how things have been super crazy and now how everything's kind of coming back and tying up together again. So when we're looking at interest rate here, we're going to go over, uh, very first, let's go over Boris Johnson first, where you have the UK leadership. So it seems like he is still holding off um, and he's, he's actually still holding on to his office where he has won a very, like by, by the margin, uh, he has won uh, so far right now. He, is, he seems like he's a strong candidate. So that is also, that's bringing in optimism when it comes to the pound. So when you guys are looking at, again, the fundamental side, there are a couple of different aspects of fundamentals itself. We talk about geopolitical stuff. We talk about, you know, the macro fundamentals. We talk about economic data and everything. So within the geopolitical side, again, it comes down to the politics, from across countries, across borders. For example, we've been talking about Russia and Ukraine, but it's also politics within a country itself that also affects the currency. So in this case, uh, for example, when there's elections going on or anything like that, you will also see volatility when it comes to a specific currency. A lot of the times when that type of news is about to come out, you will already see from a technical perspective that the currency will tap into those monthly and weekly levels as the pound has been since there's been so many fundamentals coming out. But today we start to see a little bit of more optimism and we started to see the pound kind of rally up um, in the New York session when we started to get news about Boris Johnson having a little bit of a, a margin victory and still being a strong candidate so far. So that's on the, the political side. Um, and then let's go ahead and move on to interest rates. So this is going to be pretty much where majority of the focus is going to be when it comes to a lot of the, the markets, when it comes to a lot of the currencies, when it comes to a lot of the commodities, where it seems like with half uh, point interest rate increases all but certain in June and July. So they're kind of, now we start to see that the Federal Reserve officials are starting to shift their focus away from uh, a destination on hikes to something that's triggered to determine and explain the broader impact of their policies on the economy. So now it's no longer about just interest rate hikes. Can we do half basis point hikes? Can we do quarter basis point hikes? Can we do like a 75 basis point hike if necessary? But now they're starting to think about their overall policies. This is where you start to think about from contractionary to accommodative policies and accommodative policies back to contractionary. And what phase of this economic cycle are you sitting in? And is the economic data there to support that uh, transition from one type of policy to another? So right now we're starting to see that we're shifting into contractor, contractionary policies from accommodative. And what that essentially means is that you start to pull the money out of the economy that you have been injecting in for almost two years now and also increasing interest rates, which is part of the contractionary policies. But also we're starting to see the data points that are supporting that type of move. So for example, when you look at PCE coming out, when you see anything with you know, the labor market and FP coming out, which came out pretty strong compared to what we we're forecasting last week, all of that is kind of supporting the interest rate hikes that we are expecting to see in June, so this month, next month, and then in uh, September is when we start to see a pullback in the interest rate hikes. So right now, it seems like the sentiment is still there. They're still going to increase the interest rates, but now the focus is starting to become what are other things that we can make a part of our contractionary policy, which is going to help build this confidence in the consumer that yes, we can continue to increase uh, interest rates and that it is going to be beneficial to them while pulling the money out slowly, right? So what kind of sectors can we pull the money out of? And do we need to continue, for example, incentivizing consumers to go and spend money in certain sectors over the other, which is really going to help out you know, the consumer confidence. Again, the core of the economy is the consumer. So that's where uh, the most of the, the focus is when it comes to a lot of central banks. Now, moving on to the economic calendar, we start off quite easy. Yesterday, we've had a lot of bank holidays, even in uh, London session today, we've had bank uh, holidays here from Germany bank holiday and the French bank holiday. 
and then not too, nothing really came out in the New York session. So the boost that we started to see in, for example, the pound, um, which moved, you know, incredible, but that came from the macro fundamentals, again, with Boris Johnson, the political side. And then going into Asian session is when we start to see things pick up a little bit, where you're starting to see the Australian interest rates coming out. For example, we're expecting a, a massive increase in, in the interest rate hikes. And now we want to see if you're trading the Australian dollar, is the economic data to kind of support, is, is it there to support this move? Or are we really going to just see uh, maintaining 0.35% or maybe somewhere in between 0.6 and 0.35. So that's really the only high impact news that's coming out in Asian session. Other than that, you have household spending, you have average cash earnings. We already know that the yen overall is weak. So I'm not really expecting, uh, you know, massive numbers when it comes to household spending or average cash earnings, anything that we haven't already expected. And then going into tomorrow, you have a little bit of news coming out in London session where you have the investor confidence from the Euro. You also have the final services PMI coming out from the pound. And then just a very little news when it comes to New York session. So again, this week is all going to be about what kind of sentiment is being put out there this entire month, matter of fact. Any movements that we are going to be seeing in the financial markets, it's not coming from the economic data. It's more coming from the sentiment that's already being put out there and the market's trying to price in the sentiment. And then even after the data comes out, any corrective moves. And then we start to see uh, Secretary Yellen speaking. So that's going to be something to kind of pay attention to. You know, uh, let's see what she's pretty much going to be talking about. You click on the folder. So she is due to testify on the fiscal year 2023 budget before the Senate Finance Committee, which is perfect because this gives you an outlook of what can we expect when it comes to interest rate news, you know, this month uh, with the Fed especially. And then in Asian session tomorrow, again, very little news coming out, really nothing uh, high impact or anything like that. You guys can watch out for the economy, watch your sentiment. I think that's going to make a bigger impact along with the bank lending. That's already going to tell you a little bit about consumer behavior. So change in the total value of outstanding uh, bank loans issued to consumers and businesses. If you start to see this number increasing, again, that tells you uh, one thing about the consumers. Right now, we know that the overall economy is super weak. So I'm not, again, really expecting positive numbers to come out of any yen economic data overall. Wednesday uh, gets same thing, quite easy. Uh, the Euro session, the London session, again, the US session, not much coming out. You guys could watch out for crude oil inventories if you're trading US oil or if you're trading USD CAD, but that's pretty much it, right? And then Thursday is when things start to pick up a little bit because that's when the Euro interest rates come out. They're going to have a press conference. You're going to pay attention to that. You're going to pay attention to the monetary policy statement. Pretty much look at what's the sentiment that they're putting out. And it seems like we're pretty much looking at just holding on to the same interest rates, no increase uh, whatsoever, but also they're not decreasing either. So they're maintaining it right now, which pretty much makes sense given how badly they're affected by the Russia-Ukraine war when it comes to the oil and the fact that oil is part of everything when it comes to an economy, everything from production to like, you know, filling up your gas and all that type of stuff. And then as we continue down on Friday, you end off with CPI data coming out from the US and then you also have the ECB president speaking, then you have the consumer sentiment and inflation expectations. So really I expect the market to kind of ease out by Tuesday, by Wednesday, and then get ready for the ECB interest rates coming out on Thursday, along with the CPI data on Friday uh, with the consumer sentiment and inflation expectations. I really just see uh, those two days that are going to be really affected by economic data. But other than that, uh, we're gonna see some corrective moves mm. from the massive push up that we have seen in the last couple of weeks when it comes to the technical side. All right, All right Stefan, let's go for it. That sounds good. Thank you, Shoma, for another great break now. All right. Let's get into uh, the technicals over here on GJ on the monthly. So obviously we've had a very nice push up and something that we've been saying for the past couple of weeks was that if this candle, obviously we tapped into 156 over here and we retraced, right? And what we were saying was if this candle starts retracing and ends up closing like a weak uh, bearish candle, the next candle could potentially create a bottom wick pass out of that candle and continue up to retest that wick up there, right? And that wick up there, obviously you can mark right on that wick, but what I like is this support right around that 167,500 level that we ended up rejecting, 
All right, we ended up rejecting a few other levels over here, like 164 that we previously just broke through. And now we're like sitting right on top of 165 as well. So are we going to continue to push up or are we going to get a bottom wick formed on some of these daily or weekly candles that, to then continue back up and potentially continue up to fill that wick? Looking at the weekly now, the reason why I marked off 165 right here is obviously the psychological level. But you got these candle bodies highs to the left over here. Then if you look to the left, you're not going to be able to see it too much right now. Like what I also have marked off is one, uh, 166 up here as well. Previous support and resistance. You'll be able to see it on the daily and the four hour pretty clearly how strong that level is. But that 165 level, I just wanted to mark off because of those candle body highs to the left. So are we going to stay above that level right here? or end up rejecting it over here while forming that bottom wick on the daily. I'll just get these tools out for a second. All right, awesome. So looking at the daily now, daily again doesn't have a bottom wick yet. We have very strong bullish price action. Ever since tapping into 156, we held support higher low at 158, and we've been pushing up ever since, right? And it kind of looks like the price action from – when COVID first happened on the monthly, where we got that tank from COVID, and ever since then we held support, and we were just printing bullish candles ever since tapping into 156, right? So you can very well expect price to continue up, but right now we are pretty overextended on buys. We did close strongly above 164 over here. So can we get a further pullback right back down to 164 before continuing back up to uh, 166? Just keep this over here to or uh, to one sixty seven five hundred. Excuse me. I right, hold support at one sixty six and continue up. Looking at the four hour now. Now we got a very strong four hour candle close above one sixty five. Next candle close much weaker over here with a toss top wick. The next one right now is creating a bottom wick net right now to continue up. So are we going to fill that wick? Or can we expect some kind of a pullback like we've gotten in the past over here on GJ? Like once reaching that high, we get a pullback to hold support in here and continue back up, right? Once creating that high, we get a pullback to hold support in here, and then we continue back up. We got a little pullback right here, but price continued up. I want a deeper pullback into these areas over here so that we could end up either holding support right in here to then continue up or maybe even get like a pullback here and maybe it's just a short pullback to continue up. And 167 really is, or 166 gets tested. Let me look at the uh, price action to the left over here. We could end up rejecting that resistance to the left around 165 to 500, also a psychological number. You have this wick right over here that ended up rejecting that level as well. So can we push through that level? Or are we going to tank just like we did right over here? And price continue right back down. Can we get a pullback over here? Right. There's one thing I want to go over if we go up to uh, the weekly and daily time frames, just to point out something real quick. Sure. So on the weekly time frame, you guys see like how extremely bullish that we are. The last time we had that, we started to see consolidation um, afterwards, right? So if you zoom out a little bit, there you go. So last time we had a massive push up like that, there you go. And then we saw a consolidation. And then again, we had a nice little push up once price broke out of consolidation this year and then pushed even higher, rejected, came back down and then held on to a support to continue pushing. So we already know that based off the weekly, we're sitting at some sort of an overextended a move where there needs to be some sort of corrective move, right? There needs to be like a bearish weekly candle close. You could do like a basic break and retest, right? To continue back up. That only is confirmed when you go down to the daily time frame, And then you start to see, uh, if you go down to the daily real quick, oh, yes. and then you start to see another, again, a massive push up, no corrective move, but you start to see signs of exhaustion, right? Where, yeah, there you go. The last daily candle on Friday, that was closed, it was rejecting 164 and they came back and closed almost like a, a doji, 
right? And then the current daily or the last daily candle that closed right now made a bottom wake, broke the lows, you know, somewhat of grabbed a liquidity from the consolidation that happened to the left and then started pushing up from there. So we could continue pushing up, but once you cross that 165, 500 area, uh, 165 area flat, there's really nothing, you know, stopping us from continuing all the way up to around 167 level flat. Um, and then you could see another pullback from that point, right? Because we did see a massive sell-off happening from 167,500. Yep. We are sitting at some sort of like a, an overextended move. We just need to wait for a proper pullback. Exactly. And you're not taking any kind of sells right now. You're just watching and, and waiting for the higher lows to be formed to continue this up until right. price start, starts breaking higher time frame supports. Right. So the f we're now at the one hour. And again, that 500 level, we can look at it to the left. Got a lot of rejections over here to the left, but that's that nearest resistance. You have one right over here as well, but it looks like we're above that right now. Can we hold support in this area, which I can mark off something like that on the one hour to see if we're going to hold support in there and then continue up to 165, 500. There we go. So this is that level I was just talking about. I'm actually going to readjust this real quick. Hate when that happens. I'm just going to, we know this is the level to the left over here. So right now, so far, we are holding a support and a higher low. If this candle closes bullish, we got to see if we got a 30 minute close, but do you have enough range in here for you to take continued buys during Asian coming right back up to retest these highs. So you get about 20 pips. So you get at least grab anywhere from eight to 10 in here um, pretty easily if you get your formations, you know, and your setups uh, here. Looking at the 30 minute now, we did get a 30 minute close. Only thing is it did pass the low of that candle and we have some kind of rejection and higher low formed over here that we may have to worry about over here, probably in the 15 minute. Yeah, you see this 15 minute support right here we could end up rejecting that level. So if we keep showing signs of bullish momentum where price is starting to continue back up, like this is where you can use some of your lower time frames over here. As price has been creating these lower highs within this range, we're still holding this support in this area. And then you have this level right here, right? So what we actually just got on the five minute was a close above that level here. So see if you get a nice support formed in this level, and then you could take this price uh, back up. Again, you're not taking this based on the five minute, you're taking it based on the higher time frame, but you're using that as a reference to show like, okay, we have further confirmations that will continue up. I'm not just gonna take it based on this 30 minute candle. I wanna wait for more confirmations because we could very well be at a high up here and continue to reject. Let's move this over here. So that's what I'm looking for on, on GJ. I'm waiting for that support to hold right here and price to be passing some of these wicks. You'll be able to get something in here right around this area up here, about 18 pips. It's a little small of a range, but you can very well grab something inside of there. For any kind of sells, do we end up closing below the support to continue right back down to 165, right? Now, when it comes to 165, you have this whole range that price could be tapping into unless you want to draw it down here at the support. But I'm just looking at that psychological level right there as well. They want to be aware of 165. Uh, it's obviously a whole number, so we'll keep it there. But yeah, you have this area right here that price could be coming into. So that previous support. But just keep an eye out for 165 over here for any kind of sells. You, I mean, it's, it's hard for you to be selling GJ right now with the weekly and the daily looking the way it is. Um, so maybe safer sells will be below this level. But if you get like a little break and retest right here, you have the same amount of pips in this range to take price right back down, about 20 pips in here. Uh, I would just be hesitant of trying to take sells, right? Wait for structure to break and then take the cells. Um, looking over here now at gold, gold over here 
on the monthly, we got that previous monthly candle closed, very strong bearish candle with a wick to fill, but we ended up rejecting uh, 1830 and holding support on the next month, right? This current monthly candle came into 1870 and is rejecting this area right now and starting to retrace back to its entry or back to its open, right? So is this monthly candle, you know, it's only the 6th of June, is this candle ready to flip bearish and continue down with maybe some FOMC members getting hawkish or um, any kind of, uh, you know, good data coming out of the U.S., any of that stuff happening, you could get a possible retracement over here. Looking at the weekly, especially like if you guys look at the U.S. dollar index over here. I've been talking about this level right over here since we were up here where price could be coming down into this key area, holding support and printing higher lows after getting that retracement back on the U.S. dollar index, right? We're just forming a higher low in this area, this key area, and possibly continuing up. But these were all-time highs on the dollar, which is typically ac actually weak. It's just strong right now because they're increasing rates, right? They're, they're printing so much money in the market right now that how strong can the U.S. dollar get? So right now, are we printing a higher low to continue up, or are we going to get further pullbacks on the U.S. dollar as you've had a nice trend line over here, but you've had a trend within the trend, price respecting, but can you get a further pullback over here to continue back down and then possibly continue up with further increases in interest rates. But I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. But that's kind of where you see gold now starting to hold that resistance to continue down as you see the U.S. dollar holding support and kind of continuing up right now. So right now we actually got a doji candle, week, weekly doji candle, passing the low and high the previous candle. But this candle right here on the weekly already created the top wick and is now flipping bearish. So in a bearish trend like this, um, since tapping 2000, our area right up here, can we be continuing down and retest our low down here, which was formed, I'm just going to draw this like right here, got that previous support. This was like a little fake out of that area. But every time we tapped into this area, price pushed off. But can we come right back down and retest that area? We just need to close below that 1830 level uh, to know for sure. Now you see we're sitting in a little bit of a range right now. Um, price obviously held resistance over here and held this low. And it looked like we were creating a higher low over here. And then we came right back up to 1870, looking like we could possibly break through it to continue up to next levels up here. But we ended up rejecting with a hard, strong bearish candle close. This current daily candle already created a top wick, passed the low of the previous candle right here. So where are we headed? Are we headed for 1837, 1838, the support? Are we headed for 1830? Or are we going to break through that area and continue down? All right. Looking at gold now, now we're just sitting in a range, right? Everything sideways, higher lows, higher highs, lower lows, lower highs. Um, we're now sitting at a previous support here, significant area here to the left. Price has bounced off this level multiple times. So we need to clear below that area. I like the bearish price action. I like the, like that final rejection of this area on the four hour plus tapping into that 200 EMA. I like this final push before continuing back down, right? Gold is pretty bearish right now anyway, because of the increase in rates, right? So are they going to keep increasing them? And gold just continues down. You just play in those uh, cells over here. We just, it looks like we need to close below here first before continuing. You can see this level a little clearer here on the uh, the one hour now. Price is holding support at a, after a very bearish move over here on uh, gold. We did close below this support. So can we hold any kind of a resistance? Can we continue back up to this area? Can we break this area right here and continue up to hold a resistance? Kind of like what we had right here, where we kept this low or created this low. We come up, consolidate a little bit, and then continue down. So now that we created this new low over here, like we did here, can we come up? 
consolidate a little bit and then continue back down. Now looking at the 30 minute over here, 30 minute, we're just gonna adjust a few things, I think, because I just don't like the way things are here. Yeah, there you go. So you have this support over here, all the way over here to the left, you have that support, rejection, rejection here, rejection there, and then price obviously rejected over there. We're now sitting in a strong range over here where price needs to break out of this area. I'm going to move this here, and I think you're going to have safe sales below this area. You may want to, you know, maybe uh, secure something around this area right there with that wick. You got that resistance right over there, but other than that, you got a clean move all the way down to 1830, right, that you can mirror. Maybe somewhere into this area right here you're going to be securing. But um, I want a safe close below this area before taking price down into here and then eventually continue back down. If we get any bounce off this area and a close and a retest above here, 1844, I'd wait for the retest and take price back up, maybe into this area right there. All right. Anything to add, uh, Sharma? That's about it. So all the moves that we're going to be seeing right now, again, use the higher time frames to understand where is price headed. Clearly, uh, it's bearish right now with all the interest rate hikes that we are seeing. And then uh, the way that, you know, when you're looking at geopolitics, also the markets have already priced in uh, whatever was happening with Russia, Ukraine war. I know like we've already given you guys so many updates. It's pretty much the same thing over and over and over again, which the market has priced in. So now we're waiting for new catalysts, which right now it seems to be, you know, can we continue to increase interest rates? Uh, what are the monetary policy is going to look like? Uh, can the consumers kind of support this interest rate hike and everything like that? Uh, when you start diving into little different sectors of the economies as well, uh, we talked about, for example, how real estate is something huge because that's where a lot of major investors turn to when it comes to wealth generation. Um, so when you start looking to that data points, you know, starting to slow down just a little bit, just a bad bit, but those are just indicators, right, of how the different uh, sectors of the economy are starting to react to the different monetary policies and the different actions that are being taken by the central banks and whatnot. Um, so right now, we're sitting at these key levels, and again, all of this is purely market sentiment moves uh, that are happening. So look at the technical analysis, look at the higher time frame, monthly, weekly, daily levels, and understand that the lower uh, time frame levels are doing those corrective moves and impulsive moves and everything like that in order to make up the higher time frames. So when you are looking for these buys and sells, you know the famous quote: lim lim uh, "Understand the limitations of your trade." If you see those uh, retracements and everything, you know don't get too optimistic as price starts getting to your TP area that you start moving your TP unless the technical side is there to support it. But if it's not, then understand that maybe you'll only cash the 20 pips in GJ in Asian session, right? And then within the 20 pips, being realistic, maybe 10, 8 to 10 pips. But the first sign that you see that the price is, okay, now rejecting this area, it's not continuing, there's no volume, be comfortable with only taking out a small amount of pips. It's still a win. Love it. Um, you know, when it comes to the week, guys, take it upon yourself. I know there's a lot of traders out there. I've been talking to a few on on Instagram that have trouble sticking to their plan. Use this week as a theme to make sure that you're sticking to your plan. Just commit to yourself, commit to your plan right now that no matter what, the only trades I'm taking are the setups that are in my plan, in my playbook, no matter what. There's no jumping in other trades and just see how it goes. You may end up at break even, but guess what? You didn't lose any trades. Now, after that, go into your trades to see which one you lost, which one you could have traded better on, how you could have made more on this trade, how you could have lost less on this trade, and then start adjusting for the next week. But that's that's all you guys have to do. It's it's not like rocket science. Just make sure you're sticking to your plan and make sure that plan works too. All right, go back and back test it. But guys, take that as like a theme for the week. Make sure that you're sticking to your plan no matter what and see how you do at the end of the week. You owe it to yourself after all the time you've put into this market. Just at least do it one week. You guys, you guys aren't able to do it even two days. Just try it like one week, right? So, uh, you know, if, if you guys have trouble with that or anything like that, please reach out to us. Uh, but if you do do that, reach out to us, comment down below, 
and let us know how you guys did, uh, you know, for the remainder of this week and leading into next week and how you guys are feeling. All right. Mm -hmm. So, oh, go ahead, John. 100%. And we'll see you guys on Wednesday for the live session at 4 a.m. PST, 7 a.m. Eastern time. Amen. See you guys then. All right. See ya.